Thanks, Darren. Well, I'm presenting on behalf of Paul Lavery today, who's the, the team leader for this project. He's on sabbatical at the moment in Spain, making some very good contacts, I believe. Um, so why are we interested in protecting um, coastal ecosystems and improving our understanding of coastal ecosystems for management? So marine ecosystems are one of the most important, um, have some of the most important ecosystem services to humankind. Um, they protect our coastlines, they provide food and habitat for ourselves and other organisms. They can also cycle nutrients and control pollutions. Um, and about 10 years ago, there was a, a study done that actually tried to assess the monetary value of these intrinsic ecosystem services. And this study found that the coastal ecosystems contributed about 11 trillion US dollars a year just for their natural processes that they provide. And that's equivalent to the estimates for all the terrestrial ecosystems. And at the time was just slightly less than the global gross national product. So it's really clear that these natural services that coastal ecosystems provide are really important and they also benefit uh, the, the health and well-being of humans. Um, but globally, these coastal ecosystems are, are, are degraded and the rate that they are being degraded is increasing. And one of the main reasons is because most humans live on the coastline. In Australia, about 85% of the population live on the coastline. Um, and all our, our activities actually affect the coastline and can cause things like loss of habitats, um, over-extraction of fisheries, um, nutrient enrichment and algal blooms. So to be able to effectively manage our really important coastal um, ecosystem, we have to know what's there and what sort of services they provide. And for example, if you want to design a marine park and decide where the different protection areas are, um, you need to understand well what's the most significant species or habitats that need protection, where are they, how do they vary over time, how do they interact, how are they connected, um, and how do some of those key environmental factors influence those dynamics. So the area that we're going to focus on in this CRN is looking about how habitats are connected. And it's really building on research that um, Paul and Glenn and, my, and myself have been doing for the last, or oh, at least 10 years, <laughs> and um, linking in with our partners from the University of Western Australia, um, Gary Kendrick, Carolyn Oldman and Marco Gizemberti, who have also been looking at connectivity and the role of wave energy in structuring systems. So our key questions are, how are the habitats connected? And we're planning to use a variety of approaches to investigate that. Um, we want to look at how energy moves from one habitat to another. And that's an area where the Glenn and Kristen are going to be working on. Kristen was appointed at the beginning of this year as a postdoc in this project. Um, the second aspect of connectivity is looking at how populations are connected. And we're going to be using uh, genetic techniques to assess connectivity of populations. And that's um, myself and Gary Kendrick from UWA are going to be working on that project. And then the final two projects are with Paul Lavery as a lead, linking with Carolyn and Marco at UWA, looking at the role of wave energy and how that structures systems and influences connectivity. Um, so to bring about this CRN project, our approach was to appoint um, two research positions myself and Kristen, which happened at the beginning of the year, and also to appoint four PhD students um, in those four areas that I talked about we were going to be working in. At the moment, we've offered three of the PhD positions, um, one earlier on in the year who has accepted but is, isn't here yet, and another two that have just we're going to offer through the latest IPRS round. So we're still looking for, for one more. Um, we've also had a number of workshops with our UWA partner and um, just to sort of define and work out our research program. And we plan to have about four other workshops throughout the CRN project. One is next month that uh, Gary and I are running about connectivity of populations and we're bringing in some national experts to work with us on that. And the idea of our workshops is to either develop review papers or grant applications that are going to help us uh, continue on with our research. 
Most of the funding in the CRN project is for salaries and PhD positions and PhD research. So it's up to the postdocs to and uh, the other partner researchers to bring grants in to continue the research on. And so far, um, we've managed to submit two Category 1 grants and we've been successful with one, uh, the CSIRO Collaborative Cluster, which is looking at the biogeochemistry of coastal systems. We've submitted another Category 1 grant, the ARC Discovery, um, and we've recently submitted rejoinders for that. And about four other grants through the West Australian Marine Science Institution. Um, we've also published one, um, one journal article and, um, and Paul and Carolyn are at the, at the moment certainly preparing a few more um, in, in Spain. And at the, we want to increase our research output, increase our Category 1 grant applications and provide opportunities for the researchers at ECU and um, partners to work more together um, with their research. Thank you.